Morning, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Essie's Angling. It's just turned quarter to six in the morning. The sun's just started to come up behind me. So it might be a little bit dark on the GoPro, so I apologize for that. We're gonna be trying something a little bit different today at this fishery. I'm gonna be using a bomb and small boilies in the margin. And we're gonna see how we get on with that. But I'm not gonna be fishing it with carp methods. I'm gonna fish it on the tip. It's only gonna be a small bomb, probably like 30 grams, something like that. But what a beautiful day it is today. It's going to be really sunny today, I think. Even though there's a bit of cloud cover this morning, I still think it's going to be a nice day. My dad's already got here and got set up. We're fishing the end of this causeway on Lake 3 at High Haze. Just brought all my stuff down. I'm obviously going to take you through the methods that we'll be using today, so you can try them yourself if you wanted to do so. So I'll go through those in detail along with the setup. But look at this stunning fishery we're coming into summer now so all the reeds are coming up everything's green and it looks absolutely stunning there's a few fish topping this morning isn't there dad yeah my dad's already had one fish which i'll show you in a second what i'm going to do is like i said to you i'm going to be fishing tip but i'm going to be fishing two rods and i'm going to have one down the margin here and I'm going to have one a little bit further out probably. Uh, usually I'd fish this peg opposite to my dad. But uh, from what I hear, it's not been fishing very well recently. And I know that this margin here is productive for carp and also for barbel. Right, I'm eager to get set up. I'm going to get my chair set up and all the rest of it, get the accessories on. And then um, I'll talk you through the rigs and stuff like that that we'll be using. So as usual, I've not even started getting set up yet and my dad's into a fish. Oh, it's a nice F1 that. that yeah, it is. Chunk, some lovely F1s in here. So as I've said to you, the setup for today could not be simpler. The baits that we're gonna be using, I'm gonna be trying some of these mainline essential cell 10 mil boilies, and I've got some 10 mil Tiger Nut Dynamite baits as well. I know they're absolutely killer, so they'll definitely work, but they're only small boilies. The reason that I'm using small boilies is because anything will be able to take them. Barbel, tench, bream, and there's a mixture of species in here, and definitely carp. So from what people have been saying, there's a potential that the carp might have started spawning places. So with a bit of luck, they've not started spawning here. And I know that they are starting to spawn at various fisheries. This can be the toughest time of year to fish. So <laughs> it might not be the best time for us to try out this new technique, but we're gonna do it. I've got confidence in it. We'll be able to catch a multitude of species this way. And uh, I'll take you through the setup. Really simple. I'm gonna be using this flat inline pearl lead as the bomb. I like this because it'll sit flat against the bottom. Normal match bombs or coarse fishing bombs, they tend to be square and they stick up and I don't really like them. I like the fact that these are gonna lay flat. We're gonna be using method feeder hook lengths with them. I've got a couple tied up here. If you don't know how to tie your own hook lengths up, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner showing you how to do that, a video that I've made. This one's got a bait spike on. As you can see there, where I would normally tie a bait band on, it's actually got a little ring swivel and a spike just to go into the boilie. And then on this one, a little bit of a different way of doing it, I've got a tiny bait screw there. I'm just using four inch method feeder hook lengths. Now, it's a really simple setup. I've just got this going to my eight pound Daiwa sensor mainline, uh, inline lead, but this is a size 11 ring swivel which fits perfectly into the bottom of these NGT LEDs. They're only a small lead, as you can see. 30 to 40 gram LEDs will be ideal for this kind of method. You want a little bit of weight behind them just to set the hook. I've got some rig tube in here. I'll show you what we're gonna be doing with that in a second. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a close up of these components first. Now I'll show you how it goes together. Look at this, he's got another look. Another one of them F1s, a little bit smaller mm. this time. So I've just given you a close up on the big camera. I've put my GoPro on just so I can use my hands. Um, the rods that I'm going to be using today are my Shimano Speedmasters with a 4000 Shimano bait runner reel loaded with eight pound Daiwa sensor. 
uh, obviously quiver tip rods because that's how we're going to be fishing today and that's how we're going to be getting our bite indication I'm really looking forward to trying these let's get these opened up these have got a really sweet smell for those of you that haven't smelled essential cell mm, absolutely amazing it's got like a, a banoffee type smell and tiger nut boil is absolutely cracking bait I've caught on them at so many venues, I've had some nice carp on them and these are some little, just little boilies, that's all we need for today we're not targeting massive fish, it's not a carp venue, it's just a normal course fishery so, because we're using a quick change swivel and we're using these method feeder hook lengths we need a way of securing these onto that quick change swivel so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut off a tiny section of rig tubing thread that through my baiting needle and then I'm actually going to slide this on the method feeder hook length really simple there we go whoops caught in my finger oh, luckily it's not pulled it back through like that so you've got your little bit of rig tubing god the sharp these hooks <laughs> we've got this <laughs> got your little bit of rig tubing there over the loop and then I'm just going to loop that over the quick chain swivel pull it in the clip there we go and then I'm just going to slide that rig rubber back down over that quick chain swivel and that will just stop it coming off can you see that it's just covered the clip up on the quick chain swivel and what we're going to do now this fits just into the bottom of that NGT lead like that and that's secure but it's very easy to pull out which is what you want you don't want a carp towing a lead around if you get a breakage but that is very very light on the inside but enough just so we get that bolt effect but there we go so if we want to put one of our hook baits on very simple again I'm just going to underarm some of these out into the margin if I wanted to get them further out I could use a PVA bag but there we go so that's got free movement on that little ring swivel and that's perfect size 12 hook and that's all right for them little boilies so I'm going to call this the boilie and bomb method let's get our other hook length on again just a little bait spike bait screw there on the other one and I'm just going to spike my tiger nut boilie there just push it in with my thumb or finger there we go that's the rigs close-ups aren't great on the GoPro but there we go two rigs ready to go out and these so literally I'm just going to take a small handful like I say most things will be able to eat these and we're just going to pop it down this margin here probably about a foot out from the side so I've just put a small handful of them out and again just some of these tiger nuts as well tiger nut boilies we've got a nutty smell these and the carp or the fish will be moving between them they'll pick up the hook bait and they'll be hooked as soon as they feel the resistance of that lead but that's it simple as that right let's get the rods out I'm set up other than that nets out sunglasses don't look like we're gonna need them god definitely didn't give rain for today that's ready to go out so I'm just gonna drop it down this margin really stealthy where did we put our boilies it's about there so I'm just gonna set that on my rest I've seen a few bubbles coming up on the pole line so for this one again just popping an handful of these out probably I don't know let's go just out from that tree there probably a couple of rod lengths out let's make a mental note of where that is so we can cast to it next time and we'll just build up that 
little bed of boilies. Just going to tighten up to that. There we go. Sorted. Just going to spin that round a touch. Probably put this up a little bit more. Perfect. Because we're using light leads, we can use this type of setup using tip. That's why I'm calling it a bomb rather than the ledger. But I think this short hook length will work great. If the car park spawning, it might not be the most productive day's fishing today, but you've got to be in it to win it. There's some absolutely cracking carp in here. A subscriber sent me a photo of a ghost that come out of here the other day. It looked 15 pound plus. It was a it was a big chunk of a ghost carp. So we'd love to catch something like that. Um, fishing this way would be a great way to target a fish like that. So let's see what we catch. Still early morning. Um, I think the sun will break through these clouds at some point today but my dad's already had a couple of fish so it's a good sign now if this method fails I've brought some two meals with me and I've no problem just swapping back onto the method feeder but let's give it a good go we'll give it a good few hours and try and get a fish like this it's very deep in the margins here at high haze I bet it's five maybe six foot deep where I'm fishing there it just drops off straight down nice deep lake i think that's why the carp gets a good sizes isn't here and there's not a big stock of carp in there's quite a few big f1s and stuff like that some nice fish to target i know a lot of you have tried this fishery since uh we did the fishery reviews it can be a tough fishery so it's probably not the best place to try <laughs> it's probably not the best place to try a new method but um like i say there's some nice fish to target so hopefully we get something decent today Bit of a twitch on that left hand rod there then. It's a good sign. I'm in. Try and keep it away from that tree. I don't think it's massive. Spooked another couple of fish there. This is on the tiger nut. I know how effective the tiger nut ones are. It might be a barbel this, you know, guys. Feels like it's holding bottom. Oh no, it's not, it's a cap. My dad's fishing method feeders today, so we'll be able to see which techniques get in the fish. Good comparison. He is in a slightly better swim there. This is technically just an open water swim, so I have got this reed bed to the left of me. Nice carp. Ooh. We're in. Bait runner on that one. Yeah, bait runner's on. Oh. Nice coming. Yeah. Yeah, carp on the tiger, not this one, Dad. No, out. Nice coming to start off. Nice one. Any carp's good here. <laughs> the carp are fairly hard to catch at high haze, especially in this lake. Well, so far, 
the boiling and bomb technique successful <laughs> right let's get this back out like i said that one was on the tiger nut where was i probably where them bubbles are coming up don't think that'll be far off i'll chuck some more i'll, I'll chuck another handful of boilies out anyway A nice spread of them going you'll find that um, fish generally won't take a bait if it's covered in weed so make sure you clean it up every time very soft these boilies dad's into a fish seems like it's a good one nice one So my dad's just had this down the edge in the margin. It's got a belly on it. I don't think that's uh, far off seven pound, dad. No. Well, this has been in about 15 minutes now. I'm just gonna try a tiger nut on it, just in case it's a hook bait. A little bit of weed, not as much this time. I think the problem with fishing this method here is high haze is actually very silty. And when you're fishing a bottom bait in silt, all it's gonna do is sink into the silt. Now, it'll be fine on this margin rod because the, there's definitely not gonna be as much silt down there in the margin. But this one that's just out, ironically where we had the fish, um, that lead's gonna have buried itself right in the silt and the hook bait is gonna have followed it down. Um, so that could be a problem. Like I said, we'll try this technique for a few hours. We can even put a wafter on or anything. We're not limited with this kind of method. All the difference is between this method and a method feeder is you've not got bait going in around your hook bait. You're essentially fishing a single hook bait with a few offerings around it. But that's the only difference between this and a method feeder. Same size hook length, uh, similar sort of weight, same setup with the feeder rods. So if I wanted to, I could just literally use those bait spikes and put a wafter on. It's in again down this margin. What is it, Dad? Tench. What I'm going to do is in preparation of potentially swapping over to the method feeder, I'm just going to mix some pellets up. Get my pellet wetter. Get the aqua stim. Now, the last time I did this, I found that 30 seconds was just a bit too long. So, Jesus. Well, I might as well do them all now. Yeah, I found that 30 seconds was just a little bit too long. So, I'm gonna give them about 20 seconds this time. In there. So there we go, that's 20 seconds. So I'm just going to put them to one side. I'm going to save that. And I'll put that down the margin where I'm going to be fishing. I'm going to move peg as well when I go onto the method feeder. Dad's in again, look. What is it, a carp? Yeah. All down this left hand margin. So this fish is on the Aqua Stim F1 Supreme. Fish meal wafter. I'll put a link for Aquastim in the description. For anybody that's not tried them, doing some absolutely great baits. Look at this thing. 
I've literally just swapped one of my rods over uh, to a method feeder. So I'm going to have one on the method feeder and one on the bomb. It's a good fish that, Dad. Bet that's eight or nine pound, that one. I need to keep an eye on the other rod. It is on bait runner. Look at that cracker. Lovely common. Right, method feeder's on. Just got that set up, put a hook length on. And I'm just going to pop this down that margin. Like I said, I'm going to keep one on the bomb. And I'm going to have one rod on the method feeder. I think we'll have a bite pretty quick down here. So this is a little bit of a test to see if it was the technique or is it the swim. I have primed another swim up over there next to my dad because obviously it seems like all the carp are hauled into this little island. <laughs> Sorry if it seems like I'm doing a lot of faffing around this session. I do want to catch <laughs> but I also want to try out this method. I think this is the best way. We know we're going to catch on the method feeder um, but I just wanted to test out this other little method. It's pretty much the same as the method feeder, you're just not putting bait in around it. I'm just going to bait up this other swim that I'm moving into. I have one rod under this tree. I'm going to have one rod out there, just off them reeds, like that. I've just moved into the causeway next to my dad here and I'm just going to be fishing just off this little island here because my dad's having most of his carp to the other side of that island so I'm eager to get a rod out there that other swim's been pretty unproductive but as you can see my dad's getting constant bleeps and indication placement's going to be everything here i need to be just off them reeds he has lost a couple of fish today there we go that's a great cast just where i want to be that i'll put that on there i need to lift my rod up And the other one, I'm just going to have down here. This is on the bomb still. I'm not going to swap this one over to the feeder. And that's on a white cell wafter. That one. Put a few more pellets down. Just under that tree there. I just need to be careful. There is a root system under that tree that I've been snagged in before. So, oh, I've just spooked a big carp there. Hopefully it'll come back. Spook something big down here when I was trying to get myself out of that snag. I've just checked my, oh. Liner already, that's that big carp that was down here or whatever it was. Might even be a barbel. I've had barbel down there before. Feeling a little bit more confident now I've moved back. I'm not sure what possessed me to go on that other side because I always fish this peg and I do well. So I don't know why I chose that other one. I just fancied a little bit of a change but sometimes better sticking to what you know, isn't it? Right, well, I have time to make a brew. I'm not sure. I need to be quite stealthy because, oh, drop back. I'm in. That's absolutely shot off that fish. It dropped back, which is very typical of barbel. Oh, it's got me going everywhere, this fish. Look at that. Let's put you on this other cam as well.
I don't think it's ready yet. Let's come in, come in. There we go, straight away. Well, After well. moving peg. Oh, it's a good fish that, Dad. I'm just gonna put my bait runner on that other one. I've got it, I've got it. White cell wafter on the bomb. and watch the other rod well that's seven pound well worth the move already they've been spawning you can see all these scratches and damage to them that was on the bomb that what size bomb were you using um one and a half ounce so. luckily the carp swum out into the middle of the lake rather than going left under these roots <laughs> and i got a drop back Let's make the stuff, put some more feed in. Take my bait runner off that one. Put plenty in. They're obviously feeding, so there's no point feeding light. Method feed has been in about five or ten minutes now. I keep getting little plucks on it. So I'll give it another five minutes. If it doesn't go around, I'll recast it. There's definitely fish there though. There we go. That's under that tree again. That's on the bomb. It's <laughs> mad, isn't it? I move down here. Swap over to the method feeder and I'm catching them up bomb now. Oh. Fishing fairly strong. But this is a good fish. Big common that. Wow, that come in a lot easier than it should have. Oh, just had a drop back on that one. Let's put the bait runner on. Have a look at this. Oh my god. Oh, I think it might be a double this, Dad. Okay, just zeroed the scales with that wasteling on. Eight, ten. Eight pound ten. Nearly nine pound, so I wasn't far off. Dunk. Look at the belly on it. <laughs> Be careful here, yeah, because it's quite lively. It come in way too easy. <laughs> Look at the size of that. Worth the move, definitely. Lovely common. <laughs> all on the bomb, all on the cell wafter as yeah. well. Back in here, get it back. Cracking fish. Like I said, on the cell wafter on the bomb. Right, let's get another cell wafter back on and get it back down that margin. I'm also going to recast my method feeder rod. There's 100% fish down there, off that island. Because I had a bit of a drop back when I was playing that other fish, like I said. And we'll put some more feed in as well. A couple of handfuls. Again, not scared of baiting heavy. I'm going to swap this one with a pink wafter on 
don't everybody have an heart attack but I'm actually going to swap the pink wafter out for a mainline cell I'm having such good success on these don't know what it is about them whether it's the white colour obviously we all know white's a great colour just add another bit of a liner there on this one yeah there's definitely fish down there you can see them feeding let's just go past those reeds so far the bomb's winning this is turning into a little bit of a bomb versus method feeder challenge again could be purely location here under this tree who knows I'm quite busy now there's quite a few people turning up let's do a quick time check so it's 20 past nine I've had two nice fish since moving oh getting twitches on both rods look either of them could go any second got another one of these nice f1s that's a better tench dead on the pink wafter yep. shot off that one didn't it oh yeah cracker slightly bigger than them others yeah it's an angry one, that one, isn't it? Yeah. All over the place. Mm. Might have done it a favour, you know, just giving it a bit of a break. Well, yeah. You get a lot bigger than that in here. You get about two, three times the size of that. Yeah. My dad's fishing on these, and he's having a good day on them today. Aqua Stim F1 Supreme. They're oh. a brown wafter, and they're like a sweet licorice flavour. Nice. Yeah, another tench, little one. That's having a great day. How many fish have you had now, Dad? 12? 15? Something like that, yeah. As my dad's just rightly said, this breeze has picked up and it's actually blowing into my peg, which could actually help me out. It's quite a cold breeze though. But it'll definitely help these two margins. I think what the wind does is it stirs up all the natural food in the water and forces it into the margins towards you. That's my theory anyway. And what it probably also does is oxygenates the water. I mean, let's have to grab my mat. It's a really nice tench this. Really nice tench. Oh, yeah. Definitely the best tench I've had out of here. Put my bait on this other one and we'll have a look at it. Look at this tench. Absolutely lovely. Probably, I don't think it'll be far off three pound. It's a lovely gold colour. Look at how gold it is. Absolutely bonny fish. <laughs> yeah, definitely the biggest tension I've had out of here. Cracking. Don't mind catching stuff like that. Again, all on the bomb this. I've not had a twitch on the method feeder. <laughs> I've had nothing on the method feeder over to them reeds. I thought that'd be the spot that I'd be catching them in, but it's down here under this tree. Can't predict it, can you? That's fishing at the end of the day. That's why it keeps it exciting. But so far, the bomb's in the lead. Keep feeding up under this tree. Dad, you have to put it back in there. Yeah. 
finally got one on the method feeder. I was just about to get my dad to take a picture of that tench. Um, this is a little Okay, so that was the first fish that we'd had on the method feeder, um, that little F1. Let's get it back down because there might be some F1s moved into that swim. and get something else turning into an alright day thought we might have had a bit of a shock or I thought they might be spawning or whatever these fish are on the cell wafter as well mainline cell match dumbbell wafters those ones by now you'll listen the episode that we did at Hall Lane on those wafters specifically and they absolutely cleaned up so um, yeah I'm impressed with them I think Mainline are bringing out an essential cell wafter as well which is like those boilies that we're using before and they're yellow colour I think they'll be quite effective so I'm looking forward to them being released so we can give them a go as well I think my three favourite colours for baits are pink, white and yellow if I had to pick into a bream under the tree again seems like the carp have moved out under the tree again? yeah bream Another nice tenchlet, similar sort of size to that last one. Because I've got my polarizing glasses on, I can actually see a lot of the carp cruising on the top, even though there's a ripple on, which isn't a good sign to be quite honest with you for the carp fishing. Usually when they're up in the water cruising like that, they tend not to be feeding. And this is where a pellet waggler had come in. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, look at these two here. I'm back on that one. Just an absolutely huge carp cruising. It must have been about that wide across its shoulders. Swimming right towards me here, right under my feet. Stonking carp. I'll tell you what, my dad's just having fish after fish after fish behind me here. Does it feel any better that one, Dad? We'll have a look at it if it's a decent fish. Can't film everything, otherwise this video will be about three hours long. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm still dreaming about that big carp. I might try out again towards the uh, the aerator. Some bubbles coming up over that way now. But yeah, it was swimming right towards me here. Straight down and I saw it in profile. Really good fish. I'm gonna stick my neck on the line here and say it was easily 20 pound. Really good fish. Another tench on. Shots off this one. Get absolutely screaming runs with tench, don't you? Slimy things. Nice fish. It might be another tench, this. Oh no, it's a cat. 
stocky one. Let's have a look at it. Nice, have one as well. This is probably my dad's 20th fish. <laughs> Literally just one after another after another on this side. Look at this tench my dad's has caught. Absolute cracker. It's a proper tench this. They've got to some big sizes in here, haven't they? Oh yeah. They They're getting a really nice size. Look at that for a cracking tench. Normal coarse fishery. Absolutely belting tench. Look at the big paddle tail on it. Nice fish that dad. Dad's just had a double hook up, tension a carp, F1. A lot of the carp are cruising, there's some huge carp cruising. Some huge carp cruising on the top. Big ghosty, and a few others. Another nice tench, that. This one's a really nice colour. They've definitely got a lot bigger, haven't they? Noticed it's only been it's only over the last year though. Last couple of years I think they seem to have put a lot of weight on. You see, like I was saying to you before, because the the lake's not yeah. massively stocked with carp, I think the other species can get to uh, the feed mm. and stack on some weight, so that's a nice tench. And it's a deep lake as well, isn't it? Yeah. So they probably do well. holding bottom literally the last cast this one is it yeah oh it's a nice one. Oh, it is oh yeah oh what a good fish to end up someone just walking up i think that is a good fish as well That's a double. <laughs> I, think you, I think you're right. This is a very short fish though. Look at that, it's a window. What a chunk. I'm going to weigh it because I think that ain't far off a double, is it, Dad? No. Really deep bodied fish. Look at the belly on it. <laughs> Ugly looking chunk. Deformed a bit, isn't it? Yeah. On that side of it. I think that I think it makes it look bigger that actually. Let me weigh it. Nine fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Nine pound fifteen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how many pounds? How many uh, ounces in a pound? Sixteen. Sixteen. <laughs> Oh, just shy of a double. <laughs> oh dear. Right, let's get it back. Oh, absolute chunk though. Okay folks, so we're going to call it a day there and get packed up. My dad's had an absolutely cracking day. He's had about 20 tench, I think about 12 F1 carp, uh, a few nice normal carp. So he's had an absolutely cracking day. We've not had any barbel today and I thought we'd have a couple of barbel. Uh, maybe they're just not feeding at the moment. I know they are in here and we usually do quite well for the barbel, but uh, nothing today. I've had quite a good session as well. I've definitely caught more fish on the bomb down here in the margin than I have on the method feeder over to this margin and over to the aerator so uh, it just shows you that it is an effective technique I didn't get many fish on the boilies when I was fishing the bomb but I think that's due to the venue I think that high haze is just a little bit too silty for using boilies you want um, the wafters will just sit on top of the silt and they work a lot better 
as always if you've got any questions about any of the techniques that we've used today or the rigs or anything don't hesitate to drop a comment down below always try and get back to everybody in the comments where i can so i just want to say once again thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next westies angling and if you've not already subscribed to the channel now's your chance to do so and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss another video i'll see you next time folks